How's it going everyone? Today we're going to be looking at several different bluing methods that can be done at home and testing their corrosion and abrasion resistance. This is not an instructional video. Follow all the directions on whichever product you are using or look up a proper dedicated guide. We'll go through the methods in order of difficulty, starting with Caswell Concentrate. This is quite literally the easiest method possible. The only prep work is to dilute it with water. You dip your part in, rinse it off, and that's it. You can card it with steel wool and repeat to get a darker finish, but otherwise it takes less than a minute to use. Next we have Birchwood Casey's Cold Blue. I applied it with a sponge, left it on for 30 seconds, rinsed it, and repeated three times. I left the last coat on a little too long, and you can see the pitting that resulted from that, so my bad. Next, though technically not bluing but blackening, is an oil finish. I heated up the part to a black heat, quenched it in vegetable oil. I've been told this was used on older Leanfield rifles, but obviously it cannot be used on firing pins and springs because that would ruin the heat treat. The next easiest method, <clears throat> provided you have some sort of portable burner, is bluing salts. The mixture here is 300 grams of potassium nitrate to 500 grams of sodium hydroxide per liter of water. I left them in for half an hour to one hour to see how much of a difference the time makes. Now, I may have to do a follow-up video, as a channel I love posted a video while I was testing this, uh, and that channel is Backyard Ballistics. His videos are high quality, cover a wide range of interesting gun topics. Most recently, he's been on a swing of restoring water-damaged guns for museums, and his suggestion, which I will follow in the future, is a far lower concentration, which he explains in his video, first of which is in the description. Finally, what I would say is not the most difficult, but most time-consuming, is rust bluing. The other Backyard Ballistics video in the description goes over this process better than I can, so go watch his. Anyways, this is the most traditional method and has a very wide range of chemical agents to use, so for today I'll be sticking the one shown in the Carcano video. Now, don't do what I do here. Follow the instructions properly. Apply very little of this solution because if you apply too much like I do right here, it will eat straight through what oxide you've put on there and leave you with bare metal. Kind of like when you soak something in rusty vinegar. Because it's acid. That's what it does. Now that we have all our pieces, we'll start by testing its corrosion resistance with a light coating of that same rusting solution, left on for half an hour, and this resulted in basically nothing. Speeding things up with a very harsh test using a heated pickling solution, we can see how quickly it eats through these pieces, and after 15 minutes we have varied results. I realized I wasn't dipping the swab back into the solution between each piece, which meant that the solution wasn't at a consistent heat when I applied it. So I did a second set of blotches, those being the lower ones that are more consistent in size and temperature. And the results are far closer. And the third test is applying a second round of rusting solution, which I left on for about 36 hours. And I intentionally tried to overlap this with the bare parts of the metal from the pickling solution as somewhat of a control test. And now to test abrasion. I tumbled these pieces in some corn cob media usually used for brass uh, for about 12 hours. And for the final test, we're going to repeat the corrosion resistance test, this time after much of the finish has worn off, showing us a very different picture. Now, these methods vary in color and difficulty so much, I'm not going to declare any sort of winner. I'm just going to go over these pictures, let you look at the results and decide for yourself. Hope you enjoyed the video.